Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a player shield. This episode is inspired by my mobile game Element Earth because in it I give the users the opportunity to have a planetary wide shield to save the day. So in this case we have the life of a shield, the size of the shield, whether it's active or not and whether it's regenerating. So the mechanics I'm going for is basically there's a maximum shield level, there's a maximum size. Every time the shield takes damage we stop it from regenerating for a couple seconds and it takes damage which then makes it somewhat more transparent than it already is. So to demonstrate that feature, every time I click on the man or shield, it's gonna take a hit. So let's keep our eyes on the top left here. Every time I click, it goes down a bit. Notice the shield changes transparency, regen zero, and then it goes to one, and now you can see it is slowly growing more and more opaque. And that's how it works. Until it disappears completely, shield is down, active is zero, Check that out, and it's going to regenerate back to 100%. Let's watch that again. There we go. Pretty cool stuff. Now, you can add this feature to pretty much any game that you've currently got going. I'm going to show you how few lines of code it actually takes to get it working. And I actually hope you like this new character of mine. He's got a shield generator on his back. He's got his hands pointing out. I don't know. It's kind of freaky. But hopefully, we can add him to the family of heroes that we currently have on this channel. So let's jump straight into the code. I can show you how this works. So this is the somewhat bare project we're going to be building up from. In my sprites, I have the player and the shield. So that's somewhat transparent. It's also bigger than the player. Obviously, you want that. And then when you're doing your collision events, you can just make the object that's supposed to collide with the player first try and collide with the shield and then destroy itself. And that way, shield the player while the shield exists. So that's going to be placed on top of this dude. And he's going to be seen through it because it is transparent. Then I've got a background over here. I think it's just some tiles that will be tiled. Okay. And the room that has that all put together and the player smack bang in the middle. Cool stuff. So right now, object player pretty much does nothing except move around and look at the mouse. So let's add a create event. So when our player is created, let us create an instance of that shield. Let's call it object shield. Let's go ahead and create that. I wish there was a shortcut. Okay, anyway. Object shield. Let's give it that sprite. And those four variables that we saw at the top left corner of the screen earlier. Life. One or 100%. Size is going to be zero because when he starts, it's going to be inactive. Active equals true. Sort of contradictory to what I just said earlier. It's going to be inactive in the fact that it's not 100% yet. So as soon as the player starts the game or the instance of our player is created, it's then going to be charging up and getting up to 100% size. And then regen equals true. Good stuff. Now let's add a step event. Let's put this in over here. X equals object player dot X. Y equals object player dot Y. So that's just going to make sure the shield follows the player. Then here we're going to say if regen, which is the same as saying if regen equals true. Okay. If life is less than one, life plus equals 0 0.005. Let's make it sort of slow, but not too slow. Cool stuff. So that controls if the shield is taking damage and it is allowed to regenerate, so long as it's not at 100% life, increase that up. Later on, we're going to be using this life variable to control the image alpha. Keep that in mind at the bottom of this script of code. Next, we need to detect if it's active. And if so, well, if the size is less than one, then pretty much the same kind of thing. Increase size. Um, let's say 0.01. And this is actually going to be our image X and image Y scale. Okay, so like I said earlier, our image alpha is going to be life. Our image X scale and image Y scale is going to be the size. Just like that. Now, we don't have to have a draw event and draw a sprite extended with all these variables. As they're in here, it'll automatically draw our selected sprite depending on these variables that we are manipulating, which is really cool. All right, so next, let us simulate damage to the shield. I'm going to do that on a left pressed event. 
and that's going to take the life and minus it by 0 0.1. Then I'm going to say, well, if our life is less than equal to 0, if the shield has taken so much damage that it is now useless, well, then the size is obviously going to be 0. It's not going to be allowed to regen because it's just taken damage. It needs a bit of time to rest. It's obviously not active. And let's fire off an alarm to reset these things to make sure that it can regenerate when it needs to. Okay, let's say alarm zero equals room speed times four. So in four seconds time, it's going to be resetting some variables. Now that it has taken damage, irrespective of whether that damage was the damage that destroyed it, let's stop it from regenerating. Let's call another alarm. Let's put that for two seconds. This is the alarm that's going to let it regenerate again. So it takes a hit. It can't immediately start regenerating. It's got to take two seconds before it can try again. And then it regenerates, which is a little different to this one. So basically, the aim of the game is to not have your shield destroyed. Otherwise, it's going to take twice as long before it can charge up again. So let's go ahead and create those alarms. Alarm zero. Active equals true. There we go. And let's go back to our left press, see what that did. Okay, so that's going to reset this buddy. Remember, regen is going to be reset by alarm one. So let's go back there. Add event, alarm one. Regen equals true. Oh, so it's showing off to the side. Regen equals true. And remember, if regen is true, or active is true, let's go back to our step and see what those do. That's going to increase our life. Active is going to increase our size. Cool stuff. So I'm going to create an object called OBJ HUD. That's just going to have a draw event. And I'm going to paste in some code that's going to be watching the variables that we created in that shield. Okay, so it says shield. This is the life, which is object shield life. This is the size, which is object shield size. This is the active variable, which is a boolean, so that's object shield dot active, and this is the region variable, which is also a boolean right over there. Cool. So we mustn't forget to place these in our room. Let's expand this. Objects HUD, let's put it top left. Cool stuff. Our player is there. Soon as this room is created, he's created, and therefore the shield is also created as done by the create event right over here. So let's actually test this out and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Great stuff, let's see, boom, there we go. Let's destroy it a little bit, regen is zero. It's gonna go to one again in two seconds. Notice it gets a little bit more solid. It's nearly destroyed, but not totally. So you can see that regeneration happening. Check that out, pretty cool stuff. Oh, and actually, hmm, one thing we need to also do is make our shield a minus one depth. So it's above the player. Let's try that out again. Okay, cool, there we go, that's, that's more like it. Shield is about the player. Let's nearly destroy it. So now he can, uh, he's vulnerable. He's sort of vulnerable if he takes another hit. Oh no. Now if something hits him, his actual health should go down. But anyway, the shield is regenerating. It's restarting. Life up. Maximum shield. He's ready to do some damage without taking any harm. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, place them straight in the comments below. If you're having a little trouble implementing this into your game, I will be around to give you some tips. I do invite you to check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. Links are in the description. Links for the project files also in the description, all absolutely free. If you would like to see this shield in action in a more professional setting, check out Element Earth on the Google Play Store as well as the Amazon App Store. Links are in the description. You can also follow me on various social media networks, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, those kinds of things. And until next time, Happy coding, and I'll see you then.